today we've got a couple boxes in from a company called Suncor. This is their air to coil conversion kit for the 2005-2009 Land Rover LR3 or the 06-09 Land Rover Range Rover Sport. And today I'm going to be throwing it onto my 06 Range Rover Sport. Now this won't be so much of an instructional video, more of just an overview of what you get with this kit, how it all fits together, and how quality it feels. And I want to see how it all works together in the car and how many of the warning lights stay on, how many of them I'm able to get rid of, or if it just completely bricks the car. And starting off with what you get for your money. This to my door cost me $541.90. And with that, you get some literature over here that I'll dive into later. Uh, but so far, everything looks pretty good. One of these was kind of roughed up in shipping, but I can handle it. Uh, everything feels all right so far, but it's hard to really judge outside of the car. Car is now fully supported by the jacks. And I've got the front wheels off. This here is the thing that we're getting rid of. It's the airbag for the front. They look a little bit different on the ones that are on the rear. They're supported by three 15 millimeter nuts on the top, and then a bolt that goes through the lower control arm. And it's a little bit trickier to see up there, but there's a 12 millimeter air line that has a nut on it that we're gonna need to remove once we drop this thing down just a little bit. And that's the air line that I was talking about right back there. So we're gonna have to undo that nut so we can drop the whole thing out. I've loosened up the nut on the top of the strut here and it's bleeding out some excess air. So I'm gonna let that dissipate and then I'll take it off the rest of the way. So that's the air line out of the way. And I'm gonna lower the jack fully and we'll drop this thing out. So now I'm working on the other side. I've got the two front nuts off of the strut there, but the third one in the back has been a little bit of a challenge to reach with the airline on the passenger side. But you can reach it if you just bend back this heat shield there. And it's that shiny thing down there. So this is what I've rigged up to get to it. It's a wobble extension, 15 mil socket, and another extension. And that slips down on there like so. And with that last nut off, it's time to bring this side down so I can get to the airline. And there it is. Got both of the old front struts out. Now I'm gonna throw the new ones in. Both of the front struts are in and torqued down. I have articulated the suspension a little bit before I torque the bottom bolts down. Nothing really too special about putting these back in. It's the reverse of taking them out. Three nuts on the top, one bolt on the bottom. Don't have to worry about an airline this time, which is nice. And time to move on to the rear. Finally, I've got all four air struts out of the car. Turns out the rear is a little bit more difficult than the front. Uh, it's a little bit harder to get the strut out of the suspension and also it can be pretty tricky to reach the nut on the back of that because you can't just reach through the engine bay like you can in the front. Something important to remember about installing struts on these is the gap between the studs on the struts is not even. So you've got to install it this way because it won't work like that and it won't work like that. Because that gap right there has to line up with that gap right there. Rear suspension is installed. It's looking all shiny, a little bit scuffed up from the installation, but I'm gonna throw the wheels on there and we'll give it a test drive. And according to the internet forums that I found, there's three fuses that I need to remove to disable the air, electronic air suspension. Uh, first one is F3, which is this five amp fuse right down there. The other one is F26, which is gonna be one of those down there. And the last fuse to pull is gonna be up under your glove box. It's gonna be fuse F35, and it's that five amp fuse right there. So we pull that one out here, and there we go. So this is how we're looking, having just pulled out of the shop. I've got one light on for the suspension, and it's sitting right about where I want it, although I haven't warned by the labels that it's going to settle. So I'll obviously update it when that happens, but so far so good. It's telling me to slow down or vehicle will lower. I don't think it knows that it can't do that. <laughs> I'm gonna take it down to a bit of a rough section here, see how it handles. That's pretty good, I'm impressed. Speed bump number one at 25 miles an hour. Well, that's really good. Rough section coming up. Alright, it's been about a month since the last clip. I've taken this on a few little trips. I've put some miles on it. The suspension has worked great. I have no complaints about the suspension. I've heard no weird squeaks, nothing like that. Sometimes it does say vehicle suspension, vehicle raising, vehicle lowering, stuff like that. It doesn't bother me. And I have noticed that the light for the suspension adjustment switch sometimes stays illuminated. But when you're driving, sometimes this will say raising, sometimes it'll say lowering. 
If that's something that bothers you, maybe you'd want to get one of the coil conversion kits that comes with the little adapter dongle that may be able to fix that warning. But all of the modes that you get here with this knob I have tried and they do all work. They don't throw any extra codes. The snow mode works, it does the diffs and everything. And here's a month later look at the rear suspension. It still looks to be in pretty good shape. And it's the same story when you look under at the front suspension. And still retains a very respectable amount of suspension travel with the regular springs. Not quite as much as the bags had, but you can also just lift it up with a hand jack. You don't have to worry about pulling out an airbag or deactivating anything. You just lift it up, drop it down, whatever you want to do. It still rides very, very smooth on the highway. You could tell me it has air suspension. I wouldn't know the difference on road. Off-road is when you start to notice some of the differences. It's a little bit more rough when you hit a bump with just one side of the vehicle, whereas the air suspension can kind of balance it out a little bit better than the coil springs can. And obviously you lose the ability to adjust the height on the fly, which is nice. So would I do it again? Would I swap it to the $540 coil spring conversion? Absolutely, 100% would do it again, especially for this particular one, which has almost 200,000 miles. If you had a perfect version of one of these, then maybe it'd be worth it to try and restore the air suspension to keep that going. Probably is going to help you in the resale department, and it's probably a little bit more comfortable, especially off-road. Or if you don't want to mess with the air suspension, but you also don't want a bunch of warning lights, you can get a little bit more expensive coil conversion kit that comes with a little dongle that you can either plug into the OBD2 port or wire it in, and that will eliminate, I think, all of the lights and make everything function as if you still had air suspension. But I'm sure there's going to be some people out there who have an issue with me converting this to standard springs. Seems like it's a big issue on forums. People say that you're neutering the Range Rover or you shouldn't even have one if you're not going to deal with the air suspension. So I guess my answer to that is that this particular example, when I got it, it was rough. It needed just about everything you could imagine. It needed something done with the suspension. You could have gone a different route and spent a lot more money. But at the end of the day, this car is back on the road. It's being used. It's being enjoyed. It would have cost me so much more money to do with air suspension. And I don't think anyone in the right mind would have put that much money into an old 200,000 mile 2006 Range Rover Sport. Now, with all that being said, this car does drive very well. But I'm going to keep driving my Toyotas. Thanks for watching.